Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for that setup, John. I really appreciate it here. I'll be uh, keeping an eye on the Discord channel. As John mentioned, in Plextrap, we're all about getting the work done. You know, we, we started this organization with, uh, with our founder, Dan DeKloss, great AppSec pen tester, loves doing the work like uh, all of us hate doing the report writing. Uh, myself, my background, uh, Air Force uh, cyber uh, warfare officer, finished up in a defensive CPT, mainly on the blue team side, got into the civilian section, started writing reports, and I also hated it, became a Plextrax customer, and here I am today. Plextrack has evolved. We do a lot, but we're really focused on, on just facilitating the workflow, getting everything going, and, uh, and making sure that we, we're all saving time. So I'm going to kind of compress what we would normally do in about an hour into 20 minutes, save some time for questions. But just as a reminder, you can always come visit us. We are still in the safe zone. As you can see here, Plex Track in the nice little island of, uh, of Idaho and Montana. We are currently infection free. If you are not, please don't come. Just set up a Zoom chat with us. So when we, uh, we hop into the platform here, what we're presented with on the splash page is what I ha currently have access to. So we have role-based access control, which allows us to ensure that we can not only uh, divide the work between members of our team, but also ensure that we can give access to the platform to the end client, the consumer of the data. And so, as you can see, I've got access as, a, as an admin here to a ton of reports, a ton of findings, uh, and then we have this concept of the write-up database. I'm sure every one of us that writes reports has got some sort of place, whether that's an Excel sheet, a repository, anything like that, where we copy and paste things from, we try to eliminate that copy paste by bringing it into the platform. I'm going to assume that most of the audience here is, is interested primarily in the report writing aspect and how we facilitate that and share that with the blue team members. So I'm going to start off just by hopping right into how we actually build out reports and prepare them. So we organize everything in the context of clients. Clients can be actual customers that you interact with or they can be divisions inside of a business unit. We've got about a 60-40 split. 60% of our customers tend to be consultancies. Uh, some of them are on the line now, and I appreciate you guys providing the mutual support here. But then also internal red teams, the folks that are, that are actually hired and doing the job, and then sharing that stuff internally. So inside the context of a client, we've got a, a number of, of reports, and I'm just going to hop into one of these. We've got some high-level analytics well. So when I hop into a report, I'm provided a list of, of all the findings that I've generated. And I'm going to show you kind of how things look at, look when they're fully baked out, when the sausage is all the way made. And then we'll kind of step back in time and, and walk through the process of, of how I've getting, getting data. If I hop into the context of uh, any one of these findings here, you see that we've got the, uh, all the data here that you would normally include in, in any of your normal findings, your description. One thing that's really cool about a web-based platform is that, you know, if a screen, if a picture's worth a thousand words, we say that a screenshot is, is worth a thousand or a picture, or, sorry, a video is worth a thousand screenshots, but really helpful if you're trying to demonstrate how you arrived at an exploit, the steps you took instead of having to make a, sort it out as a 300 page report, even, even longer. We also have the ability of obviously dropping any other evidence that you're looking for into the platform. We take care of all the formatting for you to include things like auto numbering, your, your captions and things like that, you know, code samples as well. And affected assets. Um, and if you uh, if you're bringing in uh, some the data from a scanning tool, things like that, we even tuck in the uh, the raw data here, recommendations, references, and this is all the canned the canned fields, the things that you know most people are going to report on in any given finding. But you can add and customize how you're reporting on any particular finding. And each one of these is editable. And so all of the things that we uh, we just took a look at here are in the the finding details. You've got your standard title severity. Most of the stuff isn't required, but we have this concept of assigning these things to a user. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. But, you know, we kind of build ourselves as the, the purple team platform as a way that the blue and the red can come together. And once the handoff is made, this really allows the blue team to start actually using FlexTrack as a, as a workflow product. So in our description here, you can do inline screenshots, other images, things like that, mark down anything you like. But then what's really cool is the, the tagging feature. And the tagging feature provides a, a whole lot of power for you to really drill down after the report has been generated. If your clients really drill down, to take a look at findings that, uh, that are specific to an area of concern. We have people using these for the MITRE, the MITRE framework as well, tagging them both by the tactic and the technique. And that allows them to sort that data to drill down into it later. But if what you want to report upon isn't one of these standard fields, 
We also have the concept of, of the custom field. And this really, you can collect any bit of data you want. So it, truly, you know, anything you want, you can collect evidence here as well. All of this then becomes referenceable stuff. And you can even template this out so that you're not attempting to have to recreate these fields each time you create a finding. Our affected assets, this is where I can manually input an asset that was the, the subject of the particular finding. Or as I show you later on, when we bring things in from scanning tools, this will auto populate for me and tuck things away in the evidence. And I can have as many of these affected assets as I want. And what's nice is as I add assets to a finding, they're not just collected in the context of the report, but we start building up a database at the client level so that the client is has the ability to, to pick an asset and view all of the findings across all of the reports. Got the ability to drop those screenshots and videos in here. You can put as many of those as you like. You don't have to worry about formatting and sizing those things. Uh, that's all taken care of for you. Same thing with code samples. So the structure for how data is input for a finding is really built to give you a, a way to come in, put all the standard stuff in, but then add as little or as much data as you want so that it can match your reporting platform. We're always trying to, to straddle the line there between how do we make FlexTrack an intuitive product to use and how do we also provide flexibility for our clients to, to do the things they, they want to do. I mentioned the fact that we have these, uh, these status trackers. So once you've handed off a finding to your blue team, they can come in here and they can begin to document the actual work of remediation. So now, you know, I take myself from the point of a tester and now I'm, I'm, I'm on the, the receiving side of this. You know, I can assign this to John Doe and John Doe is like, hey, I got this. And now we start getting this running narrative of all of the, the actions that have been taken on this particular finding. And what's nice also, and I don't have this demo instance uh, linked here, but we have uh, direct integrations at the API level with both Jira and ServiceNow. So that if you've already got a ticketing system and you don't want to use the built-in method for tracking your remediation, you got that two-way sync going on so that the tickets continue to be, be handed out. So that is the big picture of what findings look like fully baked out and, and a very high-level overview of how you actually put them into, into the structure of a finding. Uh, but I kind of want to walk you through, how do we actually get this data? How do we get from, from a blank canvas to all of this, this information? So I'm going to start out by creating a, a new find or new report, actually. And so it's, it's really quite simple. Not a lot is required to get you going. You can always come back and add more of this information later. But we do allow you to collect a lot of metadata at the report level to include, you know, fun things like when you started and ended this. And, and the idea is that get all this metadata in to include potentially who we're signing as far as the operators. Can even tag things at the report level. You know, perhaps this was an annual PCI test, and, and there we go, PCI annual pen test, which I got twice. Nice thing about the tags is once you create them once, you've only got to type in a few characters, and you're off to the races. It'll autofill for you. So now I've got this blank shell of a report that has absolutely no findings in. It. So a couple ways, that, actually three ways that I can get findings in here. I can start from scratch. You know, a custom finding just gives me the blank fields, everything that we walked through when I showed you a finding fully baked out. If you don't like what's in the finding details, you can always add those custom fields. If you had added a template, all those custom fields would be here for you uh, from the start. So the, the methodology for how you do that is the same. However, you know, the ultimate goal is to save as much time as possible. So we also, as I mentioned uh, when I started this, have our, our write-ups database here. And the write-ups database is nice uh, because, once again, no more copy and pasting. So say I found you know, something like an SQL injection in the environment, figure out what flavor it is that I'm looking for. And now what I've done is I've pulled a local copy of this finding and all the associated data that I've saved in that finding into this report. But I can modify this. I don't have to be happy with, with what I had pre-canned. I can enrich this. I can assign what the affected assets were. I can collect additional parameters should I desire. I can enrich it with screenshots and videos and code samples and all that. And when I'm, when I'm doing all this and I'm saving this, I'm not impacting the underlying master copy of this from the write-ups database. I'm just making a local copy. However, should I have done such a great job of enriching and, and making this uh, better than it was, I'm always free to copy it back to the write-ups database so I can use it in the future. And, and I don't have to, to worry about uh, doing all those actions again. 
I'm not going to pollute my, my data base by, by going down that route at this point. So the, so the third way that we can bring in findings is, is from scanning tools. And I know we've made a lot of jokes. I've been listening over the last couple of days about passing off Nessus reports as pen tests. But there is value to these tools, at least as a starting point, a, a place to, to triage from. As I showed here, there's a whole bunch of parsers that we, we currently support. We're adding new parsers all the time. It's pretty trivial for us to parse out uh, exports a little more in depth if we uh, want to integrate at the API level. But you know, quite simply, let me grab a scanner sample here uh, of a, a very simple burp import. And we simply bring that in, parses it out, and now I have all of those, all the data that came from that report. And it doesn't matter if it's burp or Nessus or Acunetics or any of the other things that we support. It brings in all the information directly from the scan tool, parsing it out. And as I mentioned earlier, we also tuck in the actual raw data, the evidence that comes from the scan tool. Some people want that, you know, some really aren't that interested, but it's there and it's available for you. But now, just as with any of these other findings, I've got the ability to further enrich and edit this. You know, perhaps this was brought in by Burp as a high, but there's mitigating controls in place. I want to downgrade this to a medium. I want to tag this with certain things. You know, I want to start, you know, indicating which of the, the MITRE attack um, uh, tactics that this was associated with, we'll say like initial access, can start doing all that stuff to include any evidence I want to include as, as screenshots of code samples. So at a high level uh, and in very quick abbreviated fashion, you know that is how I am getting the data into the report. There's other data that I can also throw into the concept of, into the report. You know, oftentimes there's artifacts that are things that you want to capture that just don't make sense to put into a finding or any other structure of the report. So I've got basically arbitrary file storage, can really put anything I want. Perhaps I wanted to actually attach the raw XML of that report of that burp sample into this. And so now it's available for the clients uh, actually inside of, of the, the report. So I, I mentioned this several times of making it available to the clients because we really do at Plextrack want to change the paradigm of delivering the 300 page pen test report. Because quite frankly, we know that number one, we're paring down the data that we're putting into the report. Everything that I collect, I can't present to the client or make available to the client. So we're already giving them an abstracted version of what we're collecting. But then they're trying to sort for the signal through the noise, sift through this by putting the information into a web based platform and giving them access. They've got the, the ability to come in here and find what they need pretty quickly. Uh, how do I actually present it to the clients? Well, as I said, I can give them access to the platform. We have fairly robust access control. So in FlexTrack, when I'm provisioning a user, I can create them in one of several aspects. I can make them an admin, a standard user, or this concept of the analyst role. And so we've got a, a whole lot of our clients today that are giving their clients access to FlexTrack with this analyst function. They create them as a user, and then by default, they can get to a splash screen, but they have access to no data. And we think that's a good thing. So they then would authorize them, find the individual client that they want to provide that user access to, and then authorize the individual user. We still understand that in today's world, people still want documents, right? We've still got to provide the document-based delivery. So a couple different things we can do there as well. If we go back into our original report here, we can export this to Word, Markdown, CSV. When we ship FlexTrack, we have a, a default template in there. However, the vast majority of our clients are, are using a custom template. So we, we don't tell you that, yes, you can export into a Word document and pick you know, one of your five flavors of ice cream that we support. We actually take whatever it is you're using now, your actual .docx, we use the Jinja 2 templating language, and we make it so that the data exports into you know, your custom look and feel. So if I were to just use the default template that we have here today, take it a couple seconds to, uh, to parse that all out, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, pull up that file. Sorry, I'm gonna grab that from another screen. Forgot that I'm using Firefox, and it doesn't always want to uh, go where I wanted it to. So let me grab that, and there we go. So here is an example of what that looks like completely baked out. So we've got you know, the logos, 
executive summary. I didn't show you the narrative section. We have a place for you to put all those narrative things that would normally go into the front of your document. And then we can start building it out however you want to include whatever tables you are interested in. Those tags really give us a whole lot of functionality to, to automatically do a lot of the tabulation that you have. Standard summary of finding tables and things like that, additional tabulations. But then we can format the actual findings, the detailed findings in, in whatever format that you see fit. So obviously video, this finding had a video. We still don't have a way of embedding a video in a Word document. Our developers are hard at work on that. Just joking. But you know, ultimately, this is one example of how things could look. I've probably worked with a, about 60 different templates. It's actually kind of cool to see how all the different shops out there report their data and what they find that they find uh, interesting. I mean, that's completely up to you. You know, ultimately, that's all done as part of our, our onboarding process and, uh, and uh, happy to, to, uh, to show you guys uh, some other examples of that at some point. However, moving on to the other thing that we all hate doing, which is building a PowerPoint presentation to do an outbrief. So the report is one artifact that we usually have to present at the end of the engagement. However, the other thing is we got to actually have some sort of meeting. So we've got this awesome readout view, which pre prevents you from having to build yet another doc or another presentation in PowerPoint, allows you to walk through the executive summary with the client and then just move from finding to finding and find the data that is you know useful to the individual client. So, you know, I found that when I was a, a customer of FlexTrack, that this feature alone was, uh, was saving me, you know, just a couple hours in, in each engagement that I was doing. So that's kind of the big picture on, on how FlexTrack gets information into a finding or into a report and how we spit it out. But we also have a, some other features that I'm just not going to have time to. But I just want to tease for you. First one is uh, our assessments module. So we understand that, you know, oftentimes, Security begins with sitting across the table from a client and just going through a questionnaire. This could be a framework based questionnaire. This could be something that you just use to scope an operation. But the assessments module is here to really make it easy for the folks that are doing things like, you know, the CMMC or doing things like those, you know, NIST RMFs to, to, to very quickly walk through all of the questions in a given questionnaire, collect the data as they see fit. And this doesn't sound and seem like it's really all that exciting, right? Well, what's really cool, though, is that once I've gone through all of this and I, I have all those questions done, I submit the assessment and I'm back in the context of a report. And so now all of those questions that existed in that assessment are now in that same data structure. So now I can come back, I can enrich the answers, I can modify what I saw in the environment to ensure that uh, I, I'm collecting all of the data, not just what I actually got sitting across the table. And it's really allowed me to build a more robust product. So you can kind of almost think of the assessments module as a layer on top of it. So yeah, I see uh, PlexTrack does allow recordings within the report. Obviously, we can't put those into, the, into a Word export, but, but absolutely. And that's just done, once again, to, as a refresher over here in the screenshots videos. And that's where you would upload that information as well. The other thing I want to tease very quickly is our analytics. So we've talked a good bit about tags and what we can do with them. The nice thing here is now if I wanted to see, okay, what are all of the things that are associated with this client? I've got my top highest risk findings. I can change the number I've seen. I can see the status of these. So this kind of can become for your client. You know, they wake up Monday morning coming to work. What am I working on today? Well, it's right here. But also, you know, we added some finding tags. I think we added one of the MITRE tactics here, initial access. You know, I can further sort based on that and really drill down and to, to just what I'm looking to see for that. So getting rid of that tag, so I've got a little bit of a bigger data set. Additional things you can do here is we got the breakout by severity, but then also here, you know, you can see by the report, where am I getting identifying the most risks in my environment? What I really find very, very useful, but isn't, you know, the most complicated things in the world is just quite simply, you know, how am I doing as far as my remediation? Am I, am I winning or am I losing? Am I opening more at findings than I'm closing? 
obviously for this demo account or this client, I've, uh, I've opened a whole lot more. You know, but what I always tell folks is, you know, what you want to get to is a point where your green is the same size as your red. That, that way you know that you're at least not racking up more and more security debt over time. Some folks want to see, hey, what are just the things that I have found over the course of the last, you know, temporal time period here? So in the last 30 days, you know, what has been, that is newly discovered that has not yet been remediated. So uh, I want to save a little bit of time. You know, and this was fast and furious. However, if you want to get the uh, the full treatment here, I highly encourage you to take a spin over to plextrack.com. If you uh, go to uh, slash demo and you throw in the promo code Wild West, we'll enter into you. Uh, number one, you get a, a ten dollar Amazon gift card for free, and then we've also got a what do they call those things? A raffle going on for a hundred dollar Amazon gift card, and you might even get lucky enough to hear me talking at a much slower pace when I'm not trying to, to cram a, an hour demo into about 20 minutes. But let me take a look here real quick at some of the questions here. We've already talked about uh, the ability to import the recording, so we know that we've got that. But uh, are there any other questions that we've got going on that we can see in the Slack? Got uh, looks like uh, we got Brian about to chat here. Yeah, so uh, hey, Brian, uh, he dropped his email there. He is uh, our lead, uh, he's our VP of sales, actually. He'll be your primary POC. I'm uh, I'm the sales engineer here. Probably don't talk nearly as eloquently as Brian, but I can definitely talk faster, which is why I think I drew this straw. A master issue was for common things you find uh, as well. So that's really the concept of the write-ups database. And so when we ship FlexTrack, we have a ton of things in here that we've pulled from OWASP and things like that. But you are free to modify any of these. Um, or create your master, you know, a new master issue, if you will. We call them a, a master write-up. And you can add as little or as much information as you want. To include, you can even pre-populate this with custom fields. You can pre-populate this with tags. So we've got a couple of our folks that are building out their write-ups database with all of the MITRE techniques so that that way, when they're actually looking and trying to sort inside of that, they can just you know, tag, they can look in and see how is this thing tagged. And this particular one is tagged by MITRE. Herb sources, other things that we can import by default today. So let me just grab any old client and any old report, and I'll show you that list again real quick. So if I'm adding findings to a tool, so today, Acunetics, Burp, Core Impact, Nessus, NetSparker, Nexpos, Nipper, and you can read, so I won't go down the line. The um, the other thing we we do, and I didn't really do a good job of, of uh, showing the actual uh, assets that are collected. So each time you bring in a scan re report or you manually create an asset when you're manually creating a report, we add that to the master inventory for that client. And so you can see for this particular IP, you can see all of the findings across all of the reports that are associated with this. This is really helpful from a remediation standpoint because we know that usually an analyst doesn't get a pen test report. Your junior guy gets handed a list of things that are wrong with a host. But what's also nice is if you wanted to just create a very quick and easy asset inventory, you can also just drop an nmap scan in here and uh, it'll populate all the discovered hosts with what you got going on there. So, and yep, looks like we got, uh, it was a question about ServiceNow and Jira. And, you know, if there's an integration that you didn't see on that list, we're, we're adding them at about the rate of one every two week. And it's just because it's things that people are asking for. Our latest additions were, were core impact, I think. So if you didn't hear, I think they, uh, they just bought Cobalt Strike. Uh, so that's going to be kind of cool. All right. I'm close to out of time. I'm expecting John to, to grab the cane here at any no. moment. <laughs> Perfect. So, all right. Awesome. Any, well, I've got 60 seconds. Any last questions here? John, really appreciate everything you've done. This has gone off smashingly. I've been having a blast listening into the presentations. Man, being able to make this, this shift in such a short period of time. Kudos to you and your entire team. Oh, yeah. You know, you got you to really uh, give kudos to Deb and Jason and Velda, really the people that actually made this, uh, made this pop. So thank you so much.